You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Investing is not a game where the guy with the 160 IQ beats the guy with the 130 IQ. Warren Buffett In these simple yet profound words, Warren Buffett highlights a fundamental truth. Successful investing isn't reserved for financial geniuses. It's a path open to anyone willing to learn and apply the right principles. If you're a beginner and dream of making $17,000 weekly from dividend stocks, you're in the right place. In this video, we show all you need to know about stocks, from how stocks make money, when to invest, and where to invest, to showing you actual stocks that can make over $17,000 per week in the long run. But before that, you have to know why stocks and how can you make money from stocks. When it comes to investing, there's one important factor to keep in mind, and that is how to beat inflation and then earn some more. Over the last 50 years, the average inflation rate in the United States has been around 3.8%. To make real gains in the stock market and grow your wealth, you need to beat this rate. For instance, if your investments are only earning a 3% annual return, you're barely keeping up with inflation. Therefore, many investors aim for an annual return significantly higher than the average inflation rate to ensure their wealth continues to grow in real terms. And you can do that with stocks, as stocks can pay in multiple ways. The most common approach is through capital gains. You buy shares of a company at a certain price and hope that the stock's value will increase over time. When it does, you can sell your shares at a higher price, allowing you to pocket the profit. For example, if you purchase 100 shares of a company at $50 each and sell them a year later for $70 each, you make a capital gain of $2,000. Another way to earn from stocks is through dividends. Some companies share their profits with their shareholders in the form of dividends. When you own stocks in such a company, you receive a portion of their earnings regularly. For instance, if you own a thousand shares of a dividend-paying company and they pay an annual dividend of $2 per share, you receive $2,000 each year as long as you hold those shares. Sounds good, right? But when should you start investing? Do it early, as soon as you can. When you're young, it's better. This way your investment has more time to grow. You can also take more chances because there's time to recover if the stock market has problems, which it sometimes does. But life can get in the way, making it hard to invest. So here's a plan. First, pay off any big debts like credit cards. It doesn't make sense to try and make money in the stock market if you're paying more than what you earn to credit card companies. Next, save some money for emergencies. This should be enough to cover your living expenses for three to six months. This way, if something unexpected happens, you won't have to sell your stocks, which can slow down your progress. Once you've done these two things, you're ready to start investing. Now, you might be wondering how much to invest and save for retirement. A common rule of thumb is the 15% guideline, which suggests saving 15% of your income for retirement. However, this percentage can vary depending on your age and current savings. If you start early, 15% may be enough, but if you begin later, you might need to allocate a higher percentage. But if you want a more structured approach, consider the 70-20-10 rule. This rule says you should split your money like this, 70% for living expenses, 20% for investments, and 10% for enjoyable things. Research shows that people who follow this plan can handle life's ups and downs better and get ahead financially. Take full advantage of employer retirement plans with matching contributions as they provide a valuable boost to your savings. Now that you've allocated the budget to your investment, let's show you how you can buy stocks. In this modern world, investing has never been easier. There are many apps available that allow you to buy and sell stocks conveniently from your smartphone. Some of the more popular stock trading apps include Robinhood, Webull, and SoFi Invest. These apps offer free trades, powerful mobile trading platforms, and high user ratings. To top it off, the good news is that some investing apps let you buy a part of a share, which is called a fractional share. This means you can invest as little as $1 instead of buying a whole share of a company like Apple for $170. 
there's one more thing to keep in mind. We're not only battling inflation when investing, you also have to keep in mind the taxes that come with gains too. To keep it simple, there are special accounts in different countries that allow you to avoid paying taxes on your investments. For instance, there's 401k, IRA, and Roth IRA in the USA, Stocks and Shares ISA in the UK, TFSA in Canada, and Supers in Australia. These accounts are very powerful when stopping taxes from eating away at your profits, but they also have limits. If you want to know more in-depth information about these accounts, watch our video How to Legally Never Pay Taxes Again after this video. Now, the natural follow-up question is, how do I choose the right stocks? There are thousands of investment options available, but how do you decide which ones should be part of your portfolio? It's essential to consider multiple key metrics to make informed decisions. First, assess a company's financial health, looking at metrics like revenue and earnings growth over time. Pay attention to dividends. Consistent and growing dividends often indicate a stable company. Look at the price to earnings (PE) ratio to evaluate whether a stock is reasonably priced and then the average growth over the years of the stock. One category of stocks that ticks all these boxes is dividend aristocrats and dividend kings. With 25-year and 50-year track records of increasing dividends, respectively, these stocks are prized by investors for their history of reliable dividend payouts. Another option, if you don't want to dive deep into the metrics, is to follow the broad market using index funds. They offer a simple and cost-effective way for investors to gain exposure to a diversified portfolio of stocks or bonds. These funds typically have lower fees than actively managed funds as they require less ongoing management. They're a straightforward and low-risk way to participate in the stock markets, making it best suited for beginners and those who prefer a hands-off approach to investing. But one of the most important things in both these approaches is to consider the dividend reinvestment strategy. A dividend reinvestment strategy, often called a dividend reinvestment plan, or DRIP for short, is an investment approach where you take the dividends you earn from your investments and use them to buy more of the same investments instead of receiving them as cash. This strategy offers several significant benefits for long-term investors with the power of compounding. First, by reinvesting dividends, you purchase more shares, which in turn generates greater dividends. Over time, these reinvested dividends compound, accelerating the growth of your investment. This compounding effect is like a snowball rolling downhill, getting bigger and faster as it goes. Additionally, it's a way to maintain a disciplined approach to investing, ensuring that you keep investing over the long haul. It helps you to buy more when prices are low and fewer when prices are high, which can improve your average purchase price and reduce the impact of market volatility. This approach is a valuable tool for building wealth steadily over time. Okay, now that we've set the stage for the big picture, let's see if there are stocks out there that have the potential to pay over $17,000 per week or $68,000 per month for your retirement. The Big Picture We're using John as an example here. We know stocks can earn you both capital gains and dividends. John is considering early retirement 20 years from now. And for our investment, John is following the 70-20-10 rule. Considering John is an average American who earns $67,521 annually, this means he'll set aside $13,504, which is 20% of his earnings, for stock investment. To make it even more simple, this is $1,125 per month. Now, we have to select the stocks that are a best fit for long-term dividend investments. For this video, we'll be selecting the top three that fit the bill. The stocks picked are based on how much on average the stock price has increased every year, denoted by the average annual yield. Next, how much dividend it pays, and how much is that dividend increased every year denoted by CAGR, or Compound Annual Growth Rate. Our first pick, for the big picture example, is Dover Corporation, known by the ticker symbol DOV. 
This stock has quite a good score when it comes to metrics that have important roles for long-term investment. It currently has a dividend yield of 1.59%, which matches the average dividend yield of the S&P 500. Additionally, it has a 10-year compound annual growth rate CAGR, of 7.82%. This means that on average, its dividends increase by about 7.82% each year, which Dover Corporation has been increasing consecutively for the last 66 years. And to top it all off, the stock has an average annual yield of 11.1%, which is calculated by taking its stock appreciation over the past 10 years, that is 111%, divided by 10. So what does all that mean for John's retirement? Since he's allocated $13,504 each year for 20 years, if he invests in DOV, after 20 years, his investment will be worth $1,703,882, paying an annual dividend of $105,548 or $8,795 per month. That's $2,198 per week good, but not quite $17,000 per week. Be sure to wait until the end as this number only goes up from here. Now, to calculate how much John has earned in capital gain from this stock investment, we have to take the difference between John's contribution to the investment and the investment value after 20 years. For John's contribution, his yearly investment of $13,504 for 20 years adds up to $270,080. Also, remember John reinvested his 20 years of dividends too, which all add up to $472,523. Add both these numbers and John's contribution to his investment ends up at $742,503. Putting these values in the capital gain formula, which is the final value minus the total contribution, divided by the total contribution, and then multiplied by 100. This means $1,703,882 minus $742,503 minus $742,503 divided by $742,503 then multiplied by 100 equals 129.48% of capital gain. The next option for long-term investment is American States Water Company, known by the ticker symbol AWR. This stock has a current dividend yield of 2.22%, which is above the average dividend yield of the S&P 500. Additionally, it has a 10-year compound annual growth rate, CAGR, of 8.24%. This means that on average, its dividends increase by about 8.24% each year. And this company has been doing this consistently for the last 22 years. The last metric is the annual growth. This stock has increased its value by 177.6% over the last 10 years, which means on average, it has a share price increase of 17.6%. Based on all these metrics, if John invests $13,504 every year for 20 years in this stock, his investment after 20 years will be valued at $5,047,558. That significant jump is because the stock has a massive average annual yield of 17.6%, and it's not shy of dividends either. After 20 years, his investment will pay an annual dividend of $443,077, or roughly $36,923 per month. That is $9,231 per week. Close, but still not that $17,000 per week we're looking for, right? Don't you worry, we found a stock that could make this happen. But first, let's see how much John made in capital gain from his AWR investment. We know John's yearly contribution for 20 years equals $270,080, and his reinvested dividends for 20 years adds up to $1,599,801. Add those two figures together, and his total contribution is $1,869,881. Using the capital gain formula, 
$5,047,558 minus $1,869,881 divided by $1,869,881 multiplied by 100 we get a capital gain of 169.94% from John's AWR investment. Now, if you found this stock appealing, let's see what this last stock has to offer. Our final stock for the year is Parker Hannafin Corporation, known by the ticker symbol PH. This stock hits the sweet spot in every metric you have to take into account for long-term investment. Like most dividend kings, it has an average current dividend yield of 1.62%, but the important metric here is the CAGR, which is growing this dividend at a rate of 12.44% every year. To top it all off, this stock has increased its value by over 215% over the last 10 years. This means on average, each year this stock grows by 21.5%. Now, let's say John invests $13,504 every year for 20 years in this stock. After 20 years, his investment will be massively valued at $10,195,342. That's because the stock has a massive annual price increase of 21.5%, along with a CAGR of 12.44%. These two work in tandem to grow the investment massively. After 20 years, John's investment will pay an annual dividend of $1,334,120, or about $111,177 per month. That's $27,794 per week, $10,000 more than our $17,000 per week target. And don't forget the capital gain. To figure out how much John made from this investment, we take the final value of $10,195,342 minus the total contribution of $4,132,162, which is $270,080 from his yearly contributions and $3,862,082 of dividend reinvestments. We divide that by the total contribution, then multiply by 100, and we get a capital gain of 146.73% from this investment. In this video, we discussed how to invest in stocks, when to invest, and what metrics to look for. We slightly touched on how to avoid getting taxed on that income. Now might be a good time to watch our video on how to legally never pay taxes again. Here, we show you how you can receive every single penny from your investment without paying taxes, legally.